Eagles Entertainment. Hi, Troy. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing fine, Troy. How are you? Oh, another day. I hear you, man. Another day, man. So uh, I have a lot to talk to you about. I'm, I, so let, let's, <laughs> let's get right into it. I really appreciate you calling me and, and taking time. I, I want to first start with this little, you know, the Eagles are very excited about Darius Slay. He's going to follow the opposing wide receiver. And I can't remember the last time the Eagles had a cornerback who did that. Now, Bobby Taylor kind of shadowed the bigger wide receivers. Did you do it much from 1996 to 2003? Did, did yeah. Emmett Thomas have you do that? Yeah. So the way, we, the way we work was we eliminated, we eliminated, we eliminated one in some cases. So let's just say we always eliminated one with the double teams and we forced your number two to beat me for four quarters. Okay. That was Ray Rose philosophy. We're not going to put a one on a one unless, you know, my pride or ego, I asked for it that, that particular week because I wanted, you know, just say, hey, we just said, we're going to, you're not going to beat us with your one. We're going to take your one out the game and we're going to force you or force the opponent to beat us with their number two receiver who I chased all game. Interesting. That's what really gave people problems. Huh. You, you, so you, you think the offensive would have figured that out at some point? Well, you could, but you still had to. Then you had to still had to go execute. Yeah. So you had to pick your poison. So I traveled. Obviously, I mean that's. But it was you. You let dog. I mean let let be. You know, put his hands on you down low. Put dog over top of him, and then you 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 pick your poison. If you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna throw to your number two guy all game long. Um. You know, you pick that match. That that was just. You know, me versus your number two or your number three. It didn't matter who it was. That's a that's a bad matchup. So there are other ways to do it that Eagles fans should be aware of. That it's not necessarily going to be Darius Slay chasing down the number one receiver all the time, because you can do it. You can take receivers out of games doing no it question. other ways. You can do it. You can other way. No question. You can do. It. You don't even have to. But the way we play, we didn't play cover two, so we were we were true. If you put somebody in your face and you, 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 you play you play this back in the day, you just play ball. But there's other ways that you can take people out by concepts and zones and traps, um, you know, pass offs. But there's other ways to do it because a lot of time that's pride and, you know, that's one versus a one. Yeah, it sounds great as a good storyline, but you can get the guy you can get a person to ball. You can find ways of getting a person the ball, but you know I know Coach will he'll he'll be creative, and it's great because what now I want you to think about this now. If it doesn't work out, what does that do for the guy? What does that do for the, your new UFA? Yeah, that you just did you just put a new contract on, and the expectations are so high that he's supposed to be doing this, and you know it's sometimes those days don't you know. They may not be what is planned, and you set yourself up for failure. But there's a balance. There's a time to do that, and the scheme to do it. And then there's times where which which they have done um, throughout the years where you can scheme around around that. Yeah, and I mean, let's be honest. The NFL, it's never been easier to complete a pass in the history of the league. Right. So the idea of a quote unquote <laughs> shutdown cornerback is it's right. I mean, so just think about it. During not, if we just say from just post this new era, very seldom did you see five receivers. Yeah, we talked about when we you know at the time Arizona they had three. You look at the greatest show on turf. They had, you know, between Tory Holt, Isaac Marshall, Ant Lee, um, Ricky Prohl. Um, the, um, the, uh, Akeem, I met was his, um, was, uh, remember the number, the little short, little punt return they had, Akeem or Amir. But back in the day, you know, you just had two, you didn't have three, you didn't have four or five. Yeah. Hey, the close that you mentioned the Rams, the closest you came to the Super Bowl, right? Was that 2001 season, 2001, 2002, 
right? But we lost to Carolina, Carolina. You lost to Tampa, Tampa lost and, the, to the, and the Rams. And, and the Rams. Oh man, do you feel? How do you feel about that? Do you like do you, do, in, as you've made your life in the in the game of football? Do you ever look back and and as you've gone to all these Super Bowls as an executive in the NFL and think, oh, I came so close? You know, so close, but we we didn't have what it take. It was obvious. You know, Super Bowl 52 was the best Philadelphia Eagles football team. They got it done. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't, and I'm so proud to be um, associated with um, the young men who closed the deal. It's one thing, we, we did a whole lot. We won a lot of football games, man. We said, you know, we moved on from the standard of the, as I would say, the Buddy Ryan standard. You know, because we live when we when we all got there, you know, they we were all living in the shadow of you know Eric Allen and Reggie and Jerome and you know that whole group. You know, I grew up watching them. We 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 were living under that man. They were tough, but they never got through. They they didn't make big playoff runs. The Jim Johnson Andy Reid era. After you know, we we began to not only win divisions, we began securing home field advantage. We were knocking at the door. So we set another standard. But then the ultimate standard is the Super Bowl winning team. Hmm. No question. They finished the deal. Arguably the best team in the in, in our quote unquote in this particular era, the last twenty, thirty years, to defeat the New England Patriots under Tom Brady. That was a that's a task in that game. Where were you for that game, by the way? I was sitting inside the booth with next sitting next to Al Riveron. How how impartial were you? You couldn't <laughs> tell. I had a great poker face. Did you I really? Mean, you had you had to be professional. You couldn't I mean, see. Yeah, it. absolutely. You know, no cheering. No, you know, when you saw things happening, you saw you saw the momentum shift. We had the momentum once. Then after the the big sack. The sack, uh, the sack fumble, you know, that was a game-changing point. But you, you, I'm keeping my poise, but I'm seeing green. I'm seeing my my mom is crushing me <laughs> the entire game. You know, every family member, bar, man, we about to get this thing done. We're going to bring it home. It was always we, we about – this was the entire game. I then ju- I'm looking I, that, in the stadium, and it's full of green. That sack, I – I wasn't cool in the press box. I jumped up and like cheered after the Derek Barnett sack and Brandon Graham or the Brandon Graham sack and the Derek Barnett fumble. I wasn't professional at all. Been a long time, man. (laughs) uh, So I I just, and I I just say that because it's important that I give homage. Yes. yes. And give, they, they got it done. Yes. Troy, you have been, you've made a living of football as a player, a senior vice president of player engagement head of the NFL Players Association now, executive VP of NFL's football operations. Uh, do you sit there every day and, 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 ble- and, and thank your blessings that, you're, that you've been able to make a, a life in the game of football absolutely. and make it, and also make an impact for the game of football? Yes, absolutely. And it's, it's interesting that you, you kind of lay out that journey because I was sharing that uh, I was on the phone with Troy Palomalo this weekend. We were having a discussion, and we were talking about our journey and in particular, I share it with him as he as he's thinking about, you know, how does he enter back into football, the game that he loves. And from my playing experience, from my youth experience to now my executive experience, I went from being a, uh, an active participant, just loving the game of football, playing a game. And what do I enjoy and love the most today? Being an active contributor. There's nothing more fulfilling as I look back at my life now and what I do is to be able to contribute to the game that has done so much for me and my family. I don't know anything but the love of football. It's it's the only thing I know. And to be able to be in this position today to mentor young men, I mean, it's I deal with Coach Harbaugh. Ron, Coach Rivera, Andy, Leslie, Coach McDermott. I'm dealing with Deuce. I mean, I can go on and on. All of these men I shared a locker room with in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. 
I want to think about that. Sean McDermott, I mean, like, so I am dealing with and being able to engage and grow, preserve the game, and be part of those decisions that hopefully allows our game to sustain itself and actually grow in the future. There's nothing like it. There is absolutely nothing like it. It, Troy, I've I've said this to many people in, in the life. I, the, the NFL is so strong and so popular and so powerful that the earth would have to be a smoldering pile of ash <laughs> before the game would not go on. So here we are, and what an off season! I mean, everything from mid March, um, the COVID nineteen pandemic, the free agency, the draft, the virtual off seasons, the the killing of George Floyd, the racial injustice movement um, uh, around the country. Uh, we are now on the precipice of a regular season. I mean, what has what has this been like for you on the front lines of everything? So, so this is what I would say. If not for my faith, I don't know where I would be. But Dave, my faith allows me to have to be grounded and to have a foundation so I'm not being tossed and turned with the emotions and the anxiety of what is next. So that being said, starting off with the pandemic, <laughs> then you move it into draft to the virtual off season to the George Floyd. Now to here we are training camp, but just being able to, and I've been this from, from day one, be responsible. It's always safety first. Control the controllables. Do proper contingency planning. Create options. Vet all scenarios. Keep your poise. It's going to get heated. It's gotten heated with the coaches. Every phase of the way, it's been complete, um, in some cases I would say complete turmoil but it was necessary because we needed the, the turmoil, the disruption and ultimately stay poised, listen never overreact only speak when it's appropriate hear everyone make sure there's an inclusive process we'll get to a, a good point and I say all that just to say, through it all, there are still more questions as being asked than we have answers. But we have to we have to remember, each of us have to remember, this is not normal. We're in unprecedented times, as people would say. We're dealing with an invisible enemy. And we don't have the virus itself will tell us what we can and can't do. Control the controllables. And that has been the foundation of my framework every day as I deal every single day from, you know, let's just go back two weeks, go back two weeks. People started reporting to camp, testing. Tracing, test results, or lab work, people upset, it's an hour late, doesn't work, and you just go, and you see the highs and lows of the coach, and you just stay calm, and you just listen. You find the answer. Now, we're, hey, we're a month out, but it's all contingency planning. But it's contingency planning around, and I had guidelines, Dave. Mm -hmm. So I stayed inside the guide. What are the guidelines? With the CDC. <laughs> And what our medical professionals told us what the guidelines were. So I wasn't, I didn't have to make anything up. We didn't have to make anything up. It was you plan, whether it's training camp, whether it's your off season, whether it's your, your, you know, what the, the season going, you're going to plan stadium operations, facility operations based off of these guidelines. And you got to be creative. And that's been the approach from day one. Are, are you optimistic about a season? 
Yes, I am. And, and, and I've been that way. It was the same. I got asked the same question around draft. When GM or managers told me I was an idiot. This is the dumbest idea. I can't believe you're even thinking about a virtual draft. This is what happens to you, Troy, when you put a suit and tie on. Literally. Quote, end quote. Mm-hmm. It is the dumbest thing. That's what happened. You used to be such a great football mind, and now you've turned to the dark side. Literally. Mm-hmm. And then you just say, hey, this is our reality. This is, we're not making this stuff up. We're going to do the best that we can. Under the, circ- under the current circumstances until the virus tells us we can't do it anymore. Let's hope that day doesn't come. And we just hope that day doesn't come. But all of the planning, people go, you keep saying draft. Yes. You, you, you keep saying regular se- I'm going to plan for 16 games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fans, look, fans look at the bubble in the NBA and the NHL and they say, well, why can't the NFL do a bubble? I, I, I know. I, f- I feel like I know why. But, but you're, the, you're the guy who's making the decisions. What, what, is a bubble even remotely feasible? Uh, uh, a little I difficult. It's, yeah. it's just, I mean, think of it. It's a little difficult. I mean, our numbers just – we have a density issue unlike other sports. That's just – that's the foundation of why some things that other sports have flexibility that we just don't have. I mean, it's why we had to put the tier system in. Tier one. Tier two, tier three. You're operating in that system. Why? Numbers. Numbers. Staff. Personnel people. Players. We have a density issue. Yeah. And inside that density issue, there's spacing issues. And the only way you can pull it off is if you test if you test to the absolute maximum, right? Like you have to be. So, so we've, I've learned this quote from Dr. Seals. We can't test ourselves out of the pandemic. What does can't that mean? do it. What does that mean? Meaning it, it's, it is, it's, it's not just the testing. It's the face mask. It's the hand washing. It's all, it's the proper distance. It's all of these things together that defeats the virus. Not just testing, 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 testing. All of these other things have to work together. Because if we, which, what we don't want to create is an environment that people, well, I'm testing, I'm good. And now you la- we relax. Human nature is to relax. Well, I'm good. And then we don't see anybody walking around the building with gloves or face masks on. That's a problem. How do you hold teams accountable for that? So you have to do it. You you hope that the teams hold each other accountable. If we want to play ball, if we want to see the link rock, if we want to see Eagle Nation fly back in, these are the things that are necessary for us to do. Or it won't happen. Everybody has a role and a responsibility. Everyone has to be accountable. Everybody, from the person working in the kitchen, the person doing the the, the field care, the nutritionist, the trainer. Think about and put it in this context. We have 172 issues, possible issues every day. 172 possible well, well, issues? No, 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 no. I'm talking about per facility. When I think of tier one, tier two, that 170-something people that are entering into NovaCare. Gotcha. That 172 are going in their car and they're departing. That's 172 possible issues. Let's say issues, possible stories. That is happening in 32 cities. Yeah, that's a lot so, of people. That's a lot, that's of, a lot of people. Yeah. I just put that in context. I just say the one. So that is, Spadaro, everybody that's that entered to NovaCare, you're a possible story when you get back in your car and you leave out of the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And what you do between that time, who you engage with, how you engage with that person, and you return back to NovaCare. September September 10th rolls around the NFL season starts we're all happy 
Uh, everybody's watching. TV ratings are going through the roof. What are you doing? Are you just, are, is the league, are they monitoring every single moment of this moving forward? Yes, building absolutely. In, building yes. in flexibility for the season in case there absolutely, are? Absolutely, absolutely. There's, it is always, as you, you're well aware, there's always contingency planning. We see things. There's, there's, there's things that we know are going to happen, whether we know that's going to happen. You know, we know possibly sometimes there's disruptions in cities where we, you just got you have to move a site. Here, we're making, you know, we're, we're, we got multiple people tracking not just policy, tracking hospitalization, tracking deaths, tracking, you know, what does that city look like? What does that state look like? I mean, we're tracking all of these things and saying, okay, possibly these particular states, how many teams do they affect? If a team wants to, you know, so we're they were looking at all of those different things, but we feel comfortable about where we are. Hey, after 14 days, we can't. After 14 days, we knew going in, we were going to have some positives. We knew that. That wasn't, we learned that from baseball, basketball. Ba- we had all of those great learnings. So we knew that that wasn't a surprise. But in the first 14 days, when you feel like, when you look at people being disciplined and exercising the things that have been laid out from a medical protocol, critical, the players are disciplined, the coaches are disciplined. And as long as they remain vigilant and disciplined in those protocols, they give us a chance to go. They give, a, they give us a chance to kick the ball off. What do fans have to look forward to this year? Is there any, like, well, how does the league feel about the possibility, even a infinitesimal possibility anywhere that fans can go to games? And, and what is the league policy? And, and that will vary. So that will vary. Yeah. And we've seen that. You know, there's some just based off of state, governor. Um, we've seen the, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, um, you know, Mark Davis has chose not to, not to have fans. That will be different because there are locations and cities that will have fans present. There will be some that won't. This is what not just the player, the family members, the media, um, club ownership, general managers, personnel. This is the environment that we're in. So it's not new. It's going. It could, it's going to be a, a different feel in every location. Now, this is where we can be creative. So, it will be different in different stadiums. See, to me, I wish every. I wish the league, or I'm mean, whatever. I mean, I'm dreaming, but you know, make people aware that hey, it's not just the players and the coaches and the me's and the you's. If everybody did the right think, things, think, yeah. we, right, we would all have a chance to watch games. Yeah, we we can't we can't emphasize it enough, and I, I'm I'm happy that you 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 clarified that. I'm just speaking from if we don't control our own house, we can't go out publicly and tell people to join because we're all in this together. We have to be an example. If you want, if you want to watch ball. If you want to play ball, if you want to coach ball, we got to do these things. And it just starts with discipline, respecting others, wearing your mask, washing your hands, the proper distancing. We got to follow those medical protocols that's been put in place for us. We just got to follow those directions if we want to play ball. Yeah. But it's going, you're absolutely right. It's going to take all of us. Troy, the, the, the other issue, the, the Black Lives Matter, I know you, you, you joined the Eagles organization in a conference call, and we talked about it at length, and it was very, very moving. And I wonder, you know, has that kind of been, in a sense, pushed to the side in the public spectrum? Well, I hope not. I hope you not. Just have all, you have, you have, I hope not. Yeah, me, me too. And this is where you have all of these different, let's just say, elements. They're all kind of coming in together. And you would just think humanity is something that we all we all should be sharing in on. You know, nothing should be put the health and the wellness of our country and our communities is top priority. 
Then there's humanity, just the fairness and equality and equity is something that everybody wants. There should not be a time and a season where we as a people are thinking about diversity, equity, or inclusion. This should be something that's fairness, equality, love. This should be part of our just our daily way of life every day. So I would hope, I can't speak for others, but I would hope that what we saw, the nastiness, the ugliness, I hope that we didn't go back to normal. I hope we didn't go back in our daily. I would hope that I pray that that didn't happen. Nothing to this date has told me that. Mm -hmm. no, nothing has told me that our, our country, um, the National Football League, even the things that I'm seeing, this, the, 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 the activations at the club with the voting education and registration. None of those things have told me that America is letting up. Yeah. One more item here. Mm -hmm. Fans watching the games on television. Are you privy to any of that planning from the league standpoint? We watch the NBA. They're pulling it off. Great broadcasts. NHL, same thing. Do you have any idea what's, what fans can expect when they're in their well, mansion? a little bit of what you've seen. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's going to be some virtual. I think the eSport what we saw with, with NASCAR and what we were seeing with basketball and baseball, it gives the fan a little indication that, okay, I should, I'm sure that the NFL is going to be adding this element. And as you can imagine, as other people go out front, there's learnings. We can say, oh, that worked. Or maybe we can tweak this in our broadcasting. So I am privy. I don't want to share those things now, but I think the other sports have given the fan base a glimpse of what game day could be like. And I think we're getting used to it. So it's not going to take us out of our norm. By the time we get to September, man, we've had a couple months of basketball in, you know, baseball. You know, I mean, we're watching golf never really was truly, truly affected. I looked at NHRA this weekend. I'm looking at how they're doing it. I'm looking at NASCAR. So I, I do believe the other sports have gotten our eyes and our ears at least conditioned to, okay, I see, I see where this is going. I'm, I'm okay with this. This works. You and then ultimately when the stars get on the field, those, 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 your stars that's wearing the Eagles uniform, it just brings up, takes it to a whole nother level. You have a son, Taryn, uh, Ohio State football player, um, <laughs> right? Yes, that sir. Injury last, like, like we're, as we speak with the college game is, is, is in a bit of a crossroads here. What are your thoughts on him playing college football and the state of college football? And if there is no college football, will the NFL play on Saturdays? Oh, well, that's a, that's a hold. I'll start with the latter first. You know, there's some things there, some, some legal things that would probably have to be ironed out before that's even considered. Um, then I'll go to my son, my wife, Tommy and I, we feel very comfortable when we sent Tehran back to Columbus. I think that was June 6th was the exact date and the things that they were putting in place, their practices, the testing, their protocols, their spacing, how they deal with um, those who are positive. We felt very comfortable. And there's ongoing parent conference calls every week, felt very comfortable about um, our child going back to, to school and to play ball. As we've seen, a lot have been reporting with the conference commissioners meeting to make that decision. A little bit different worlds that we're in. You know, you start talking about those a campus life. You're talking about, in some cases, 40, 50, 60,000 students from all over the world. You know, coming back, this is a different, it's just a different, different environment where ours is more controlled or private. Um, hey, I want to see ball played. I want to see high school ball being played. But I don't. We can't compromise safety. 
I would love to see high school ball, love to see college ball, love to see pro ball being played as long as safety isn't compromised. Fair enough. Okay. Well, look, man, it's been 30 minutes. It's been gold, as always. You've always been the, the number one interview in the history of my history Stop of the Philadelphia it. Eagles. Very Stop it. And we're all, we're, we all want the same thing. We all want as much football as we can see this fall and this winter safely. We, and we all have to do our part. Everyone. Safety first. We've got to be responsible. Troy Vincent, thank you so be much. got to be responsible. Thank, thank you. you so much. You're the man. Stay yep. safe. Take care. Take care. Yep. Bye-bye. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles!